Hi, everyone. Today we are looking at a different unit and the multiple integrals. And the unit is titled change of variable. Change of variables. And what do we look under this? I have a motivation as usual to know what we are in for. And so today my motivation is on the single integrals. If I'm asked to solve an integral as this, 2x e to the power x squared plus 3 dx. If you're asked to solve such an integral, there are various ways to solve this. One can use integration by parts. If you are very competent with it, you go by that. Or you can use by substitution. And for this example, it will be more easier to use a substitution method. So how do I go by this? I would like to set some u to my exponential variable. So let's say s squared plus 3. This means that my du would be equal to 2x dx, implicit differentiation. And so by substitution, I can, I can go back to my integral equation. So let's say this is 1, this is 2. I can rewrite the integral equation as this dx squared plus 3 times 2x dx. And this is equivalent to seeing integral of 0 to 2. Uh, before I write that, let me just leave the integral out, the limits of the integral out. You realize I can have e to the power of u. And then 2x dx is what I have as du. This is that. And then this, this is that. But I can't have 0 to 2 here. Why? If I have it this way, this is wrong. This is because I have changed the integrand. I have moved from x to u. And so something must be done. From equation 2, I have x as 0 to 2. What will be the equivalent in u? I have u equal to s squared plus 3. So at x equal to 0, I have u to be 3. And then at x equal to 2, I have u to be 2 squared is 4 plus 3 is 7. And so the actual equivalent of my initial integral is 3 to 7, 8 to the power u du. What do we see or what can we see? And so integral 0 to 2, e x squared plus 3. It's equivalent to that. We realize that when we transform the integral here, the limit was affected. When I move from 0 to 2x, I'm getting 3 to 7 du. Sorry, um, here is u, is du. From 0 to 2 dx, I get 3 to 7 du. This is a change of variables. If I change it to a different variable, something must happen. And this is a motivation for the multiple integrals. So I have here in my slide one that says that Transformation of the integrand results to a change in the interval of integration, which we have proven here. This is for single integration. Now, when, if we are looking at multiple integrals, what can be said about it? Can we perform the same analysis? Yes. And so you realize that with our multiple integrals, we had some Cartesian coordinates moving into some polars, some cylindrical, 
and then spherical. Polar was two integrals. Spherical and simple were three integrals. How did we move from x, y, z or x, y to the variables we did or we had in polar, cylindrical, and then spherical? We got to find out that from the x, the y, in polar, we will have r, the r, the theta. How did that happen? From the x, the y, the z, in cylindrical, we had r, the r, the z, the theta. How did that happen? And for the spherical, the x, the y, the z, we had r square sine phi, the r, the phi, the theta. And so the variables here was r theta, here was r z theta, and then the spherical was r phi theta. How did we move from x, y, z's to r theta z's phi? And that is a motivation for the change of variables. We've used this um, definitions. And so the next is how to get them and to be convinced of what we use. And so stay tuned for the next sessions where we'll go through the transformations as we've done in our first motivation slide. Thank you.